can the mind really, mind, brain, the whole psychological structure, be ever free from all conflict, from all shadow of any disturbance? Does the mind be free of accumulation? That is, have no psychological knowledge at all. Knowledge is accumulation, or the idea of to a complete freedom is an illusion. It can be done. Very few have said this. Our minds are man-made, and is there a mind which is not man-made? It is possible that it can free itself from its own uh, man-made mechanical mind. The mind being deeply conditioned, it can free itself through insight. Can that insight uncondition the mind completely, wipe away all the illusions, all mm -hmm. the desires and so on, can that insight completely wipe it out? Right. Or is it partial? Well, is there a part of the brain, part of the brain outside the brain, where no tradition, no time, nothing has touched culture and time, nothing has made imprint on it? Right. Not only a particular part of the brain, but particular consciousness, which is not this consciousness. Another consciousness, I assume. Another consciousness. Which maybe another function. The question is uh, of, of being able to put this consistent there logically. There seems to be an inconsistency in saying that uh, the mind is totally conditioned and yet it's going to get out, you see. I mean, I'm not saying it is inconsistent, but it may appear to be inconsistent. If one admits that there is, that is a part which is not conditioned, yeah. then we enter into well, quite a another different. inconsistency. Yeah. See, when you, one says it's totally conditioned, it suggests something static, you see, which would never change. Yes. Now, if we say the mind is always in movement, then it seems in some way it becomes impossible to say what it is at this moment. You could say it has been totally conditioned. It's in movement. Yeah. But it's the movement is within a border. It's within a border. Within a, within a certain field. Yes. And the field is very definitely marked out. Yeah. It can expand it and contract, mm -hmm. but the field is, the boundary is very, very uh, limited, definite. Thought has created the general and the particular, and thought is a movement that connects the two. Thought moves round it, and is, so it is still in the same area, and it has been doing this for millennia. Yes, and most people would feel that's all it could be, yes. And I think that's one of the difficulties of people who use evolution. By bringing in evolution, they hope to get out of the static uh, boundaries. Um, quite, quite. But they don't realize that evolution is the same thing, that it's, it's, <laughs> yes. it's even worse. It's the, yes. It is the yes. very means by which the trap was made. <laughs> if we take uh, the evolution of, of, you know, of all sorts of plants and animals naturally, now in one sense it seems to happen in time, right? Yes. They, one, you know, one animal is born, it dies, the next one, the next one, so on, you see. So you have growth, and yes, growth. And, but then there's change, no. there's always a mutation, and then another growth occurs, and so on. Now, see, that, that wouldn't you say that's a kind of creation? I mean, you see, meaning creation, meaning cause to grow, right? Would you say nature is the product of time? The brain has grown also in such a process, you see. It's a product of evolution. Right. Or is it cultivated carefully? Yeah. Hmm? This whole structure can die away, you see. That's, uh, that, uh, that, uh, if we try to move within that structure, then we stay in some boundary. There, now, can, it is always moving within that limitation. Yeah. Can it die away to that? That's, the point. That's another kind of movement. I mean, it's a kind yeah. of... Yes. Another dimension, I think. Yes. Say. And we say it is possible through insight, which is also a movement, totally yeah. different kind of movement. Yes, but then we say that movement does not originate in the, in the
individual or nor in the general mind. It is not inside of a particular, of the particular or the general. Yeah. Can we say the word is not the thing, yeah. whatever description is not the real, is not the true, word is not that, and I've come to a blank wall, a solid wall, I can't go beyond. Yeah. The logic, reason, and the explanation doesn't end the thing. The capacity to, to, to discern, to, to distinguish, and all that, yeah. to solve uh, to logic, technical so, yeah. problems, economic yeah. problems, so on, so on, so on. I would call that partial intellect. Yeah, I could call that skill in thought. I mean. Another quality is necessary. Yes. Is that quality intelligent? What is there beyond? Can my mind be so desireless? Yes. So it won't create a, an illusion, something beyond. You can take purgatives to cleanse the body, uh, various herbs uh, and so on, to purify the body, the organism. Now, is there a movement, an action, that keeps the brain pure? I think it has to do with the process, and it has to do with this, brain without desire. If there is no desire, there is nothing. And therefore, that nothingness is a frightening thing. Is this intelligence associated or related or part of love? One cannot accumulate love. You cannot accumulate love. Has that love intelligence, which then operates, which then breaks down the wall? It's not general or no. It is something beyond. I mean, I think when one loves with that intelligence, it, it covers the whole. I don't know that love. As a human being, having reached a certain point, I can't go beyond it to find that love. What shall I do? What is the action? What is the process? What is the insight or intelligence that will dissolve this? What is the state of my mind when I have realised any movement this side of the wall is still strengthening the wall, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I realise that, and through meditation or whatever you do, I, uh, there is no movement, but I, I, the mind can't go beyond it. Meditation is a form of silence which comes when thought is completely under control. I can't do anything, I realise that. Whatever I do is still within this side of the wall. What takes place in my mind? That I realise I cannot do anything. Yeah. So what has happened to the quality of my mind, which is always moved either to accumulate, to become, to all that has stopped, is that possible? Or am I, am I living in an illusion? Or have I really gone through all this to come to that point? Or I suddenly say I must be quiet. Going beyond all thought and nothingness. We won't say the movement ends, the movement sees its own, it has no point. I mean, is there in my mind a revolution? revolution in the sense that movement has completely stopped. And if it has, is love something beyond the wall? Well, I... Of course, it could be. Huh? The, the, the wall itself is the product of the, exactly. the process, which is the illusion. So I realize, you follow? Mm -hmm. I re I'm realizing the wall is this movement. Mm -hmm. so, when this movement ends, that quality of intelligent love and so on is there. Yeah. And perception is part of love, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Perception of, of the wall which has been brought into being by my, by this movement of accumulation, the very perception of that is intelligence and love. When thought ends, that movement which thought has created also comes to an end. Yeah. Therefore, time comes to an end. When one is speaking, 
the intelligence uh, may pr may directly function in producing the word, you yes. see, rather than having it come from desire. Yes, compassion. When you hear words like that, does that affect your whole organism as well as you? Now, you see, at first it may seem like an insignificant change, but yes. it actually is very significant. Yes. Mm. And I think that's why it is such a mystery. See, if we say desire originates from the conditioning, and the conditioning is uh, some imprint, you know, in the brain cells, could you say that this movement is changing that imprint or wiping no, it out? Or no, no, it's something, something more? entirely different, much more. Much more than that, Oh, yes. much more. In other words, it's doing something to the deeper structure of the brain, yes. not merely the memory. Yes, yes. Somebody may get a moment of perception, and then as thought comes in, it begins to tangle it up, you know. It, that means even the moment of perception is wrong. Huh? <laughs> Maybe wrong. The moment of perception, there must be leisure. Yes. There must be, you know, have a time to listen, time to read. Right. It seems that insight arises when one questions this whole thing whole very thing. deeply. Yes. That one sees it doesn't make sense. If I, if I, if it ends through an action of will, it is still the same thing. That's part of desire. Of course. If it, if it ends because of punishment or reward, it's still the same. Now you say perception is creation. Perception is cause to grow. Is it? No. No, creativity Fair. is perception. We can say nature is creative, it causes new species to grow and so yeah. on. In what sense is man creative? Let's say Beethoven had an insight and this gave rise to a certain new music, right? So in yes. that sense, it caused new music to, <laughs> Quite. to grow. Compassion is out of time. Truth is out of time. Yes. And the depth from which that comes, that compassion, is, is out of time. And therefore it is not cultivable. No, it cannot be made to grow. So we say the origin, of the, the essence of creativity does not grow, is what you're saying. That's but right. but creativity right. may cause something to grow in the field of time. Yes. It is not it created. 